friends and foes, welcome to Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today we're talking about how to pick an art residency that's right for you. Art residencies are fantastic opportunities for artists to focus on their work, develop their craft, network, and sometimes even experience new cultures. Picture this, this is about to get dreamy. Nestled amid ancient groves, the rustic studio you work in overlooks a serene cobalt lake. Dappled sunlight filters through the leaves, the air fragrant with linseed oil and old books. The rich history of artists who came before you charges the atmosphere in the studio. In this haven, time seems to slow, allowing you to dive deep into the reservoirs of your creativity, away from the clamor of the world. Every brushstroke, every hue chosen is a testament to this uninterrupted communion with your art, making the residency not just a place, but a sacred ritual of creation. Sounds pretty good, right? (laughs) An art residency is a balance of peace and intensity. It's a pressure cooker of creativity and exploration. Whether it's led by a teacher you admire or as a self-led group of artists, a residency can change your artwork for the better. In a few weeks, I'm going to an art residency in the heart of France, the Chateau d'Ocavaux. I'll be there for a month and I'm brimming with excitement. It will be my third art residency and my first as an abstract oil painter. If you're interested in how that experience is, worry not, I will be making several podcast episodes about it. You might get sick of hearing the content. (laughs) But today is about you. Today, I'm going to teach you how to find and get into an art residency, one that brings you lots of life and, and hope for your artwork to get you inspired, to give you rest away from the world, and to truly retreat into your creativity. But before we begin, let's learn about residency types. Some of these are free. Some of the art residencies you'll find out there are free to the artist. They're fully covered, paid for by the program. Some require partial payments. Some the artist must fully pay for. The one I'm going to is I have to pay for. (laughs) Some of them are also combined. Almost every single one of them will have an application fee. Usually it's under $50, depending on when you apply to them. There are many different kinds of artist residencies. Some are very simple in that they simply are providing an art studio for you and nothing else, and some are more complex. You can have a residency that provides a studio and also housing, a residency that provides a studio room and board, a residency that is self-led, as in you are the only one there, you are the one calling the shots about what you do and no one else is bothering you, or you can have a residency that's taught by a mentor or a teacher. These are usually my favorites. The one I'm about to do is (laughs) self-led. A residency that provides all the material for the artist's own creativity is also fairly common. And a residency that provides all the materials for a specific project chosen by the program is also an option. So if you've ever wanted to do a mural or do a big group project and a residency has you come on and work it for them, that could be pretty rad. (laughs) It could be pretty cool. The last, the last type is a residency that has a show at the end featuring you, the artist, or a group of residents. Some of these are combinations. Some of them are only one thing or another. You're going to have to figure out which suits your needs. So as we go down my giant list here, I'm going to be asking you questions, and I want you to think about them and journal about them. Press pause if you need to, or you can visit this whole list of questions on my website underneath the podcast. The main thing you need to focus on is what is your goal of this residency? What do you really, really want? There are so many different kinds of art residencies all around the globe. So to have a goal is really going to help you find and choose one that actually suits you. The first question you're going to ask is, what kind of art do you make? Like, Get really specific about it. Are you a painter? And if that case, do you do plein air or in-studio work? Are you a sculptor? Do you make jewelry? Are you a writer? If you had the chance to do fresco paintings, would you do that, etc.? What would you want to make in a residency, in a space that was only for creativity, away from your other responsibilities? Do you want to immerse yourself in a completely different culture? Do you want to immerse yourself in something that is so different from your norm that would just radically change how you viewed your art? Because that can happen. (laughs) That can happen easily. Are you looking for solitude or are you looking for a bustling artist community? Do you want mentorship or do you prefer independence? 
By writing the answers to these questions, you're going to narrow down what it is exactly you can get from an art residency. Another thing I want you to think about is your mindset. Are you going to an art residency to make beautiful paintings? Are you going there to learn? Are you going there to gain rest and retreat? Are you going there to network? Picking one of those answers is going to help you find the golden residency that was meant just for you. Okay, more into logistics now. You need to think about location. There are incredible residencies all over the world. Think about the climates, the cultures, and the landscapes you're interested as an artist. Do you want to be in a place that's close to home? Even if you were an hour away from your house, would that be far enough to be, especially if you were at a residency for, I don't know, a month or more? Do you want to travel somewhere brand new? Does that mean out of state, out of country, out of earth? <laughs> what languages do you speak? There are many residencies in English. In fact, I would say the majority of our residencies are hosted in English. But if you speak any other language, the possibility of what you could go to just multiplies. Does the climate affect your artwork? So I'm an oil painter and oil paintings take forever to dry in the cold. Like I'm talking months and months and months and months and months. So if I did an art residency in Antarctica, that would be a bad idea. You hear what I'm saying? Are you looking for a place that has historical significance to your medium? Are you looking for a place that has historical significance to your artwork, your medium, or your style? Or would you prefer something more contemporary? I'm talking a chateau in France versus a residency in downtown New York City. Another logistic to think about is the duration. Residencies can last anywhere from a few weeks to several months. You need to determine what is best for your schedule and your lifestyle, and also your responsibilities. How long could you take off of work if you have other jobs than being an artist? For me, two months is like the absolute maximum, but also for me, two weeks would feel like too small of a time. You got to think about how long it would take for you to immerse yourself in a new location. It takes me, because this isn't my first residency, I know that it takes me probably four or five days to get used to being in a new place, to sleep well at night, to feel the atmosphere in the air and how that changes, how it's different than Seattle. How long would it take for you to immerse yourself in a new location, including how long does it take you to get over jet lag? Because that, that makes a big difference in your ability to be creative. If the residency you found is two weeks, are there other places nearby that you would want to visit? Allocating time for such exploration and impulsivity is really important when you're thinking about the duration. The application process for a lot of these art residencies are generally the same, but slightly different in every single way. <laughs> Each residency is going to require a portfolio of your artwork, an artist statement, your resume, and sometimes letters of recommendations. Usually the applications have a small fee, and a lot of these residencies are highly competitive. You want to make sure your application materials are top-notch and that your website is updated to reflect your current work. Doing this work before you apply is going to get you more yeses. One time I applied to an art residency that had such a high <laughs> application rate. It was like 800 people to 10 spots. It was ridiculous. I did not get in. <laughs> but I tried to apply and that was fun. The next thing to think about is a little bit less fun and that is your financials. So the secret is some residencies are free for you to go to, as in the program pays for you to go there. Finding those, those ones are extremely competitive for obvious reasons, but some of them are hard to find because they don't advertise much. Some residencies provide stipends or grants. The art residency I'm going to has provided me a grant, which is nice. And other ones will charge fees for maybe a studio or something else, for supplies perhaps. So thinking about your budget is really important here before you start even applying to things. If you need to save up money, say you found an art residency but it costs $3,000 to go to, how long will it be before you have enough money to fund a residency on top of all of your other bills? I'm going to be doing another episode very soon, in two weeks probably about financing your art residency. So if you're really interested in that, stay tuned and maybe hit follow. 
more in logistics, the facilities are really important to think about. Facilities being, are you able to get an art studio? And do you even need an art studio? Maybe you're happy working at a desk in a bedroom. Maybe you work in the field in plain air. Maybe you would like a typewriter because you're a writer. Maybe you need a full-on production studio for firing cups and mugs out of clay. Another thing to think about is how easy is it to get art materials to the art residency? Do you need to pack them in your suitcase? Or could you have things ordered? Or is there a shop nearby the art residency for you to pick things up that are to the quality standard that you require for your work? One thing that I think about a lot when I'm considering an art residency is, do I want community or do I want solitude? Do I want a retreat setting or do I want just a lot of action and a lot of artists to talk to? I'm fairly introverted as a person. So when I think of growing as an artist, I actually pick situations that have lots of artists to talk to. I want lots of people to speak to, even though I do find it exhausting sometimes. (laughs) The next thing to do is to think about Do you want to learn under a specific instructor? Do you want to learn a certain style of painting? Do you want to learn how to do portraits in Germany? There's, I'm sure there's one for that. (laughs) Do you want to learn botanical watercolors in Seattle? There's one of those too. That art residency absolutely exists. Think about who the instructor is that you want. And if there is an instructor that you have who's doing an art residency, how cool is that? That's just lucky. Or do you want something that's self-led? The first two art residencies that I've went to were instructor-led. These were in Italy, and I really, really appreciated having an instructor there. This art residency I'm doing in November is self-led. I'm a little bit terrified because all I'm thinking about is, what project am I going to (laughs) bring? I haven't figured it out yet as the time of recording here in October, but, you know, I'll figure it out some point, and you will probably hear about it. Another thing to think about is how many other artists would you want? Say you're like, okay, I definitely want to be around others, but how many? Do I want it a small group, like five artists? Do I want it to be 20 people, more? And then the last thing is, would you bring a non-artist with you? Perhaps your romantic partner or a kid, perhaps a service animal? Think about that. Some places are going to be more accommodating than others when it comes to non-artists. Once you have all your answers written down, It's starting to start looking at the big databases that I'm about to tell you about here. You're going to filter in what you want, what works for you. And again, I cannot understate, there are so many art residencies out there that you can be as picky as you like. It's not as bad as online dating. (laughs) After you've picked out the residency that you like, I would highly, 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 highly recommend doing a little bit of networking. This means I want you to go find past alumni of the residency that you're interested in and ask them about their experience because not all the time is it a five-star amazing Google review you're going to find. Sometimes they're like, you know, I didn't have that great of a time because of X, Y, and Z reason. It's good to know that before you go because it would, it would just be so annoying to save up all this money, to save up all your time, and then be disappointed by your experience when you could have just asked someone who's already been there, you know? Something to consider also in art residency is the political stability and the safety of the region. Language barriers, if any, and the cultural nuances of a place, especially if it's somewhere very different than where you live. By considering these things, you're going to ensure a productive and really enjoyable art residency experience, which is what I want for you and what you presumably want for you. So now for where to look. All these databases, I've got six here for you, are places where Art residencies have paid to list themselves, right? So the program is like, I need people to find out about my work. They find one of these databases and they pay them to host it for a year or maybe forever. They're not always up to date. Sometimes it's like you pay once and you get it and then they never update it. But it's good to have an opportunity to look at. If you find one you like, always go to their own website. Go you find something in in Sweden and you're like, this looks amazing, go to that Swedish website and find out if they're actually still open because COVID changed a lot of things or if they are still in line with what it said on the database. I'm going to start with my favorite database, which is one I've used in the past. It's the Artwork Archive, but particularly their Instagram page is what I really like. About twice a month, they have deadline alerts and they post these to Instagram 
and usually has half a dozen to a dozen opportunities for artists, not just residencies, but shows and things from all over the United States. It's very cool. They also have a website. Trans Artists is an excellent global database that's free to use. I tried it a couple times and I was like, well, this is fun. I didn't end up picking the art residencies that were listed there because I found the ones I'm going to in different ways. I'll talk more about that later. Artenda, it has a 30-day free trial, but then it has a monthly cost. It's a global residency opportunity database, and it looks pretty good. I haven't signed up for it myself, but I've heard good things about it. Creative Capital is primarily United States-based artist opportunities, and even beyond residencies. I highly recommend signing up for their newsletter, which is pretty fun. You get monthly updates on new residencies coming out, new deadlines coming by, and it's right to your inbox. It's easy. Artist Communities is a global directory on art residencies, very easy to use website, and Res Arts is a global is another global directory with excellent search options. Those two tend to have very different results, search results, so I would be looking at all six of these websites to really find what's out there. Please note that some art residencies are not on databases like this at all. Some of them use Instagram to network, some of them you just have to type in residency in the place, like this one that I'm going to, which I just found on Instagram when I looked up art residency, and there, there it was. It has really good marketing, and they're like, I don't need a database like this. The first artist residency I went to, which is JSS in Chivita, if you're interested, they do plein air painting. I found them through word of mouth. Um, Some people find them on Instagram. They don't have a huge marketing team. They're very small. And it just makes me wonder how many hundreds of art residencies are out there that are just not on these databases that you just have to get lucky to find. There are some super popular art residencies out there that have huge waiting lists and some that you can only go to one time, some that you can go back to year after year. There's there's really so many options, it's hard to go over every single one. On the website, I have listed out a couple dozen US-based residencies and a couple more Europe-based residencies that I've just heard of, you know, here and there. And you'll have to look up the links yourselves, but I I think they'll give you a good start. But I highly recommend going on to the, one of these bigger databases because the searchability is so much better than my little website here. <laughs> They're pretty fun. I hope that these tips have helped you find an art residency that you like. I am, y'all, I'm so excited to go to mine. I can't wait to keep you updated on how it goes. I'm planning on keeping a little, a little diary, a, a voice diary, <laughs> a vlog without the video. And I, uh, I, I it's going to be, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to make paintings. If you are looking at an artist residency and you're actually not sure if it's legit or not, or you've, you have questions on what to expect from one, please feel free to send me a message. I'm happy to look at a website for you and to help you out and give you some advice on what to, uh, what to expect at a place like this. Artist residencies are so good for the young artist, for the emerging artist and the seasoned artist. It, it helps expand your mind, expand you to new opportunities and... Well, it's just so good. I, if you can do it at least once in your lifetime, that would be incredible. It would be amazing. It'd be so good. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Brushwork Podcast today. You can find me at stephaniescott.art over on Instagram. That's also my website where you can find the podcast and this beautiful list of art residencies. How many times can I say that in a single episode? And <laughs> and if you are feeling generous and you've liked this episode, please give me a thumbs up or leave a review or a comment, follow and subscribe. It helps me find more artists to listen to this podcast and to help them. So I appreciate you. Make good choices, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.